Three seconds to go to tie it up. Lowry goes to a Jimmy Butler, but it's off the mark. Lakers pull off the win without LeBron or AD. Winning it, 112-109. Everybody just banded together and continued to fight, and, and that's what we have to be about. That's what our identity, our identity has to be night in and night out. Just Not just sometimes, not just when we're feeling good about ourselves, but no matter what happens, we have to play that way every night. To the ice we go with hockey. The Dallas Stars facing the Ducks in the first period. Uh, not scoreless for long as Adam Enrique takes a shot on goal, but the Stars' Yanni Hankampa uh, tries to block it with the stick, but instead it redirects in for the goal, and the Ducks were going to win by a score of two to nothing. Shifting gears now to the latest on uh, DeMar Hamlin. The Buffalo Bills' safety is still in critical condition after suffering a, a cardiac arrest on Monday night, but he has shown some signs of improvement, this according to the team. Hamlin collapsed on the field during a Monday's game against the Cincinnati Bengals and was taken to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, where he remains in the ICU. Today, members of the uh, Chargers and Rams shared their thoughts for the first time since Monday. Definitely something that you'd never want to see. You know, you, you can never even predict that either. And... You know, thoughts with him because, you know, we're, we're all out there playing the game. We know this is a violent game. We know things could happen, but we never really take it to that, that far where it's in a scenario where it's, you know, at that magnitude. It's tough, uh, especially, you know, this is a, it's a violent sport, but that's, the, that's about broken bones and different injuries like that, not, not life and death. So this is, uh, yeah, this is something that's, um, I, don't, I think we're all going through for the first time. And all of our prayers. No Go question. Back to him and his all of our prayers. Yes. All right. Thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. And returning to that storm one last time tonight, here's meteorologist Marquina Brown with your final next weather forecast. Marquina. Hey, Pat. Good evening again. Yeah, take a look at the heavy rain now making its way into parts of Ventura County. We're talking about just the moderate rain for now, but as you look south, you can see the reds and the oranges become more apparent. That means the rain is going to intensify as this system moves uh, towards those folks. The folks in the Santa Clarita Valley will pretty much be up next. Right now they are dry and maybe seeing a few isolated showers here or there. Gore Hills, you're starting to get your rain kind of pick up a little bit as well. So that'll be what we watch as we go through the overnight into the morning. We are simply going to watch uh, everybody's rain intensify as we go through the overnight and into tomorrow. We'll watch out for the gusty winds. We'll watch out for the opportunity for um, those isolated thunderstorms. And of course, as we go throughout the course of the day, uh, it's going to be very eventful, clashing the colder air with the warmer air, Pat. Back to you. All right, thanks for that, Marquina. And thank you for joining us tonight. Be safe driving out there. We will have much more on the storm and its impact. The brand new KCAL News Mornings begins tomorrow at 4 a.m. And we hope you will join us then. It's expected to be a major rainmaker. And we also have a live look right now at our radar. We have a live picture outside as well where you can see the conditions out there. It is wet and our Olga Espina has your detailed forecast coming up next. Good morning, I'm Kalina Estrinos. Welcome so much to KCAL News. We are streaming on CBS News Los Angeles. We're so excited to welcome you to our new studio, to our new home. But we have so much to talk about today. We have this bomb cyclone that's upon us right now. Moderate to heavy rain is expected for the next six hours. That is starting right now. And I know overnight, I just heard all of the rain coming down. It felt like it was nonstop. Yeah, and you know, it has been just been steady rain this morning and just in time for the debut of KCAL News mornings. Uh, we are tracking a powerful storm. There is a live look at our satellite radar. You can see all that heavy rain becoming very widespread. Really, all of us are going to be impacted by this today. We are talking not just some rain, but also some snow. We have some gusty winds as well as elevated surf along the coastline. So we are going to experience some very treacherous conditions. If you are driving, definitely give yourself a little bit of extra time because take a look at that satellite radar. 
radar. We are seeing some pockets of heavy rain, downpours, dangerous conditions, and some very gusty winds for a lot of us. A lot of watches and warnings in place. I'm going to have all those details for you, take you through your morning in just a few minutes. Kalina. Olga, thank you. 402 right now, and we do have team coverage this morning with our reporters spread out across Southern California. We're going to get back to Olga with her forecast coming up in just a second, but we do have breaking news to get to this morning. This is breaking news coming out of Burbank. We're learning that a large tree is down blocking an Oak Street there and Beachwood Drive. This came down around uh, 11 p.m. last night. Crews there are now working to remove that 40 foot tree and Burbank police are now rerouting drivers in that area. We'll of course track that for you all morning. California, as you know, is under a state of emergency as this latest storm sweeps the state and we're already seeing some flooding in the West Valley. So we have KCAL's Tina Patel joining us live right now in Van Nuys to show us what's happening where she is. Tina, good morning. Good morning, Kalina. We are on the northbound or westbound 101 at Van Nuys right before the connection with the 405 and I'm going to sit to our road cam so you can see we are right behind a Caltrans truck that is actually pulled over and closed a lane here because of the flooding on the 101. Now just in front of that truck we can see a Caltrans worker. It looks like they might be trying to clear a storm drain or get something so the water can start flowing uh, down the storm drain and actually off of the roadway. But right now they've got this lane right the far right lane closed while they work. There's a lot of pooling water here. So if you're going to be Coming through this part of the 101 just before the 405. Just want to give yourself a little bit of extra time, move over into the, the more left lanes to give these crews room to work. We have been driving around this morning, both on the freeways and on the surface streets, and the water is starting to pool in many areas. So we say it uh, all the time when we have this kind of weather. If you are having to commute, we want you to, to give yourself extra time. Keep an eye on the roadways around you because there is some, some water that's starting to pool up. We're going to continue to drive around and see what we can find, warn you of the trouble spots so you know what you do as you head out the door this morning. Right now, we'll send it back to you. Tina, thank you. An intense watch underway right now in San Gabriel Valley this morning. Rescue crews there are gearing up and some homeowners are now putting up sandbags or hitting the road. KCAL's Cara Finstra and Doherty with the latest there. Cara, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yellow alert this morning, actually until tomorrow morning. You can see some of the K rails here that have been put into place. There are about 25 homes here along Mail Canyon. You can see some of them here are that are under that yellow alert. Volunteers went door to door to these homes yesterday, warning them that the hillsides above, which were scarred by the fish fire, could give way during today's rains. Now they are not expecting major mud flows, but park cars, trash cans not allowed on the street because they could become very dangerous if floodwaters move them. All right, take a look over in Azusa. Firefighters got their swift water rescue equipment ready to go. They do have extra crews patrolling all of the area burn scars uh, throughout the San Gabriel Valley. Sandbags also have been put around vulnerable areas. Here in Duarte, neighbors remember the issues a major mud flow caused back in 2016 after a fire. Not the very last storm, but the storm before this one, it poured. And I didn't think anything of it. I went into my backyard to pull some plants and I fell in a sinkhole all the way down to my, my uh, knee here. So I'm, I'm not as worried as I, I was then. They're, they're all ready. Doherty City is just ready. And you can see some uh, light rain coming down right now. Some heavier rain. When I woke up, I live here in the San Gabriel Valley this morning. Could really hear it coming down. It has uh, let up during the early morning hours, but uh, again, starting to fall at this point, and we are expecting much more today. So if you are going to be on the roads, be careful. Back to you. Cara, thank you. And just like she mentioned, driving is going to be tough out there this morning. It already is. The roads are super slick with all of the rain there. So KCAL's Rick Montanez continues our live team coverage along the 15 and the Cajon Pass with a look at the conditions there. Rick, good morning. Kalina, good morning. Yeah, really wet, slick conditions out here and we'll show you the road camera right now. This is on the 15. We are heading north just north of the 215-15 interchange here. So you can see how slick things are and how difficult 
the visibility is. We also just went through a patch of fog, so you're dealing with a couple of things if your commute goes through here. And just a few moments ago, over near Glen Helen Parkway, we saw a spin out, a single car uh, crash. CHP was already responding to that, so there is uh, difficult driving here. The freeway is wet, lots of puddles, so you want to take it easy if you're heading out. We also saw a sign on the uh, those overhead signs on the 210 warning severe weather, avoid travel until Thursday night. So that is coming from Caltrans. At this point, conditions are slick. We're not seeing much in the way of any uh, very many crashes yet, but we have seen that one spin out and certainly traffic is starting to build. So plan some extra time. Reporting live on the Cajon Pass, Rick Montanez, KCAL News. Rick, thank you so much. And because of the dangerous conditions, Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency across the entire state. That will now free up resources and also allows Newsom to call on the National Guard and also funds for possible repairs. It also opens up the Emergency Operations Center where everything is monitored in absolute real time. And the last time a storm of this caliber hit California, 23 people died. This happened when a wall of mud, boulders and debris ripped through Montecito. We have images and video on your screen here. This was in 2018. Now, last night, evacuation orders were issued for parts of Montecito and yesterday volunteers were there helping to fill sandbags. We want to help our local community and we know, you know what happened a few years ago and so we just want to be able to prepare our, our residents. Evacuation orders are also in place across other burn areas in Santa Barbara County. And up north in the Bay Area, Swift Water Team rescues have already been called out because of this system. You can see firefighters here pulling a homeless man. That's the center of your screen. This happened in Los Gatos Creek in San Jose. This is after he fell into that current last night. Now, according to the man's girlfriend, he was trying to grab some of their belongings when he then slipped and fell inside. Fire and rescue crews were able to throw him a rope and pull him out. And thankfully, we've learned that he appeared to be unharmed. Now, in the meantime, closer to home, both LA County Fire and LA Fire Departments have additional swift water rescue crews ready to go. They'll be watching the normal hotspots very, very closely, including the LA River, Sepulveda Basin, and Hanson Dam. And an extra helicopter is also now on standby to assist with possible efforts today. And back in the Bay Area last night, a family was trapped in their car after a large tree fell on top of it. Crews there had to cut the tree into smaller pieces with chainsaws just to rescue them. Thankfully, no one was injured in that incident. Now, in the meantime, in another part of the city, a tree actually did fall down onto a person. Firefighters were able to perform similar rescue efforts in this one, cutting up that tree and taking the person to a trauma center. And we have learned that that person is in critical condition. And two people have now died because of the storm. A baby was killed by a tree in Sonoma and a 19 year old lost control after hitting a patch of standing water. Jared Hill has more on the storm's impact. We have to just evacuate. They just said that the county, you know, just said that we have to leave. People in this Ventura County RV park had to move quickly to higher ground after forecasters warned the storm could drop up to 10 inches of rain on the area. We anticipate that this may be one of the most challenging and impactful series of storms to touch down in California in the last five years. This satellite photo shows the monster storm's magnitude. Near Sacramento, roads are still flooded from a New Year's Eve storm that breached levees. That water comes up real high again with those kind of flows, we're going to start having trouble. The ground is already so saturated, trees that have endured three years of severe drought are toppling over. This one landed on a car in San Francisco. Firefighters rescued the people inside. Wind is also picking up. A gust brought down this gas station on it. There's also concern about widespread power outages. You don't realize how much you miss when you don't have electricity. In Montecito, Marco Farrell was ready to evacuate. A storm five years ago unleashed a torrent of waist high mud and debris into his home. This time, he's taking no chances. We're just gonna get out of the way, let nature do its thing, and we'll be back tomorrow. But through all the dark clouds, there is a silver snowy lining. 
The snowpack in the Sierra Nevada mountains, vital to the state's water supply, is now 174% of the average for this date. And our storm coverage continues this morning right here on KCAL. Time now 411. We also have this, another royal rift to report today. We'll have more on claims that Prince William hit Harry and why Harry believes his brother and blames his brother for his Nazi uniform fiasco. Also, former child stars make a big comeback at the first film awards of the season. We'll tell you who took the top prize. Welcome back. Prince Harry is blaming Prince William for one of the most embarrassing and abrasive. And speaking of bad uniform decisions, the Texas A&M Aggies completely forgot theirs in their SEC opener against Florida. Aggies coach Buzz Williams says he left them at the hotel, didn't remember them until game time. He then had to go back to the hotel. It's okay that the team went on to win anyway, 66 to 63. And the awards season is officially underway. This is at the New York Film Critics Awards. The movie Tar, which is about a famous female composer and conductor, won Best Picture. Nickelodeon star Kiki Palmer won for Best Supporting Actress. And Kiwi Kwan, who starred in Goonies and Indiana Jones' Temple of Doom, took home the prize for Best Supporting Actor. It feels incredible. I mean, honestly, I didn't think I would have a day like this. Uh, uh, you know, when I decided to get back into acting, I mean, like I said before, all I wanted was just a steady job. So exciting. This is Kwan's first film role since the late 1990s. The Film Critics Award can give pictures a critical push toward an Academy Award nomination. All right, we are continuing our storm coverage this morning. We have heavy rain already uh, in the forecast. You can see our radar down at the bottom of the screen. Want to go over to Olga Espina with a look at the forecast. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Kalina. And yes, it is a wet day across Southern California. We are seeing some pockets of some very heavy rain, so some slick roads and uh, some flooding. I know I encountered that on my way into work this morning, so definitely be careful out there. We're going to see still several more hours of this heavy rain. Some of the other impacts being felt are of course uh, the snow, but that's going to be higher elevations. The good news with this storm is that it is high elevation snow, so those major passes will not be impacted along the coast. Elevated surf. We have high surf advisories in place. We also have some very strong gusty winds. If you do travel through the grapevine, be aware we are expecting gusts nearing 60, 70, even 80 miles per hour. So some dangerous winds expected, and uh, this is still going to continue throughout much of the day today. As we head into later tonight and into Friday, things start to clear out. But I'm going to keep you posted on how to plan your day throughout this morning and into the afternoon throughout the morning here on KCAL Mornings. Back to you. Olga, thank you so much. Time now, 417. The suspect is in custody, but still many questions surrounding the killing of four Idaho students. What we expect to find out later on today, the critical information about the killer's motive and method. And the ringleader of the Varsity Blues bribery scandal is sentenced. Find out how long they'll have to stay behind bars. Thankfully, the dog did not suffer serious injuries and is now at the shelter in Harupa Valley. Now, if you think you know the man in that video there, you're urged to contact Riverside County Sheriff or Riverside County Department of Animal Services. The suspect accused in the murders of four University of Idaho students is back in Moscow as of last night. Brian Koberger was extradited from Pennsylvania and handed over to local authorities. He's facing first degree murder and burglary charges for the deaths of those four students. And we've learned he was a former criminal justice student at Washington State University that's nearby. He was arrested last Friday. Investigators say they're still searching for a motive and also the weapon used in the attack. The Newport Beach man behind the college admissions scandal was sentenced yesterday. 
to three and a half years in prison. Rick Singer orchestrated a nationwide scheme that involved bribing university coaches and officials, creating fake athletic credentials, and also helping students cheat on tests. But I had absolutely no idea how corrupt and infected the admissions process was until this case exposed everything. There were more than 50 arrests and convictions, including celebrities Felicity Huffman and also Lori Loughlin. And we have a live look right now at Vatican City. Mourners there descending on the location to say their final goodbyes to Pope Benedict. A historic funeral today for the Pope and people from around the world travel to St. Peter's Square to honor the former Pope. Tina Cross has the emotional farewell from Rome. In a packed St. Peter's Square, the body of Pope Benedict was carried before crowds in a traditional cypress wood coffin. It's a solemn occasion as well as a historic one, with Pope Francis presiding over his predecessor's funeral. Pax Vobis. Among the tens of thousands gathered in the shadow of St. Peter's Basilica, more than 100 cardinals, 400 bishops, and nearly 4,000 priests from all over the world. He was a great pope. He was a marvelous pope. The former pontiff requested a simple funeral before he died last week at the age of 95. Benedict lived in a monastery here at the Vatican after his surprise resignation nearly 10 years ago. He still wore white and spent most of his time reading and writing theology. Only Italy and Benedict's native Germany sent official delegations for the mass, though royalty from Belgium and Spain, more than a dozen heads of state, and ambassadors to the Holy See from many nations also came to honor the former pope. After the funeral, Benedict's cypress coffin will be placed into a zinc coffin, and then both of those into a larger wooden coffin for a private burial in the grottos below St. Peter's Basilica. Tina Kraus, KCAL News. Time now, 424, seven hours of your new KCAL News mornings are just getting started. So we want to head over to Marcy Gonzalez for what's coming up next in our next half hour. Marcy, good morning. Hi, Kalina, good morning. Yes, we are just getting started here with our live team Stormwatch coverage. This is a live shot of the wet roads in Tarzana as this storm starts hitting us. And Will he or won't he? We may find out today if Kevin McCarthy's push to become Speaker of the House is successful or not. We'll be right back. I, I was standing. They're, they're all ready. Doherty City is just ready. Southern California communities are bracing for what's expected to be a major rainmaker. All right, and here's a live look at our radar. Olga Espina, she's got your details. Next weather forecast. All right, everyone. Good Thursday morning. Welcome to KCAL News Mornings. We're finally here. Yeah. And it is a busy day. So we're also streaming on CBS News Los Angeles. I'm Chris Holmstrom. All right, so first day in the new studio, we're off and running. We really are. Good morning, everyone. I'm Marcy Gonzalez, and we are we are talking about the big story of the day, of course, our weather. We have a team of reporters spread out across the region, and so we will be turning to them in just a moment. We also have Olga Ospina here with the latest on our conditions, as well as Kalina Estrinos, to tell you how it is all affecting traffic. And now let's get to our first look at weather with Olga. Yeah, Olga, just driving into work this morning, the rain really coming down, the roads saturated. So yes. you definitely want to be careful when you're driving along the roads. So what's it looking like right now, Olga? I know the storm is supposed to go through throughout the day. Yeah, we're looking at uh, still some pretty steady rain. I experienced that myself uh, driving into work this morning. Just be careful because we are also seeing some pockets of some very heavy rain. So some dangerous conditions out there on the roads. We're experiencing some strong gusty winds and you can see on that satellite radar. We also have some snow up in the mountains. So the good thing is 
This is high elevation snow, so not expected to impact those passes if you travel through the grapevine. However, by the I-5 corridor, we are experiencing those really strong gusts. Back to you guys. Okay, Olga, thank you. Because when we have lots of rain out there, we're also going to see a lot of issues out on the roadways, which we are seeing. So please take it easy as you head out the door. We're seeing a lot of cars spinning out as they're trying to get onto the off ramps or on ramps. This is a 91 right now at Glacelle. You can see a high volume of cars on the roadway. You can see how wet it is out there, and you can also see it's already starting to slow down. I know I saw a couple people having some trouble on the way in to work this morning. Um, so we're going to go out to our map this morning for you to take a look overall at the rest of LA County. So far, it's pretty quiet as far as volume is concerned and the usual traffic that you see, but we do have a problem spot to tell you about. We have flooding here, so this is a full closure eastbound 90 Lincoln. 405 to the westbound 90 Slauson Lincoln. So all of that black that you're seeing there, you won't be able to get through that stretch there at all. But we do have alternate routes for you this morning. You can take Washington or Jefferson Boulevard to go ahead and get around this. We also have delays right now on the westbound 105. This is right before Sepulveda Boulevard. This is all because of a solo car crash. We've already been seeing multiple solo cars spinning out, losing control. Uh, out because of the conditions that we have. So the right lane is blocked off here. You can see that backup right now from the 110. I know it's a stretch for you, but you can take the 10 freeway. You can also take the 91 and then transition on the 110 south and then hop on the 405 northbound to go ahead and get around that as well. And we do have drive times for you so far on the 15th through the Cajon Pass heading southbound. No crashes to report here, but it will take you 13 minutes to get through guys. It's going to be a busy one on the roads. Kalina, thank you so much. All right, let's talk about crews. They're already hard at work this morning trying to clear out the roadway as the heavy rain just pounds the Southland. KCAL News' Tina Patel is live in Van Nuys near the 101 freeway with a look at the conditions there. Tina, how's it looking? Okay, we apologize. We are having some issues with Tina's microphone, but we'll check back with, in with her in just a moment. Uh, well, they are bracing for another round of rain in the San Gabriel Valley this morning. Yeah, KCAL's Cara Fincham. She's live in Duarte. Let's see if we can get, get her right now. She's the She's got the latest there. Tina, or Cara, I know the rain was coming down mm -hmm. lightly earlier. How's it looking right now? You know, it has started to pick up a little bit. Uh, pretty steady as well. Behind us here, you can see the street. This is the, one of the major areas of concern, and sheriff deputies will be out here patrolling. They have installed all of these uh, K rails as protection for the homes, which are just beyond us here. If we pan over this way, you can see some of the homes here. Uh, about 25 homes here on Mill Canyon Road, which are under a yellow alert at this point. Uh, the concern here that a muddy rush from the hillsides would likely head this way. So this area under a yellow alert until tomorrow morning. Yesterday, community volunteers did go door to door here warning families about this storm. Local leaders are not expecting major mud flows, they say, but area fighters will be ready in case with swift water gear. Park cars, trash cans not allowed along Mel Canyon during this alert, and here's why. A month ago, if you would have looked up here on the hill, it was brown, just brown and black. Now it's green, which is a good thing because I think things are growing again. Grass is growing again and, and little creatures will come back and, and live and eat off that. Road crews will be patrolling the roads for any mud flow, rock fall, uh, down trees along uh, county roadways. This will take place in the foothill communities up into the, the mountain roads. All right, and uh, back here live giving another look at these K-rails. Neighbors say they are glad to have them back in place. They do remember the issues that a major mud flow caused here back in 2016 when the hillsides above gave way uh, back then. So everyone here just kind of watching and waiting and hoping for the best today. Again, not expecting major mud flows, but concerned enough that they have put all of these K-rails in place and went door to door yesterday with those warnings. Back to you. Okay, Cara, thank you. And all this rain is making it a really tough drive out there. Yeah, KCAL's Rick Montanez continues our live team coverage. He's in the Cajon Pass. And Rick, what are the conditions out like there? I know a lot of people traveling back and forth. 
Yeah, a lot of people this morning driving through the rain, very slick and wet conditions out here. Lots of puddles and it makes it very tricky to drive. You can see the freeway now. This is the 15. Those headlights are coming south. The brake lights, though, that's the northbound traffic. And, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of fog actually through this area as well. So there are several things to contend with. And then you also have standing water in some of the lanes where you hit that puddle. I know a lot of you probably understand this. You hit that puddle and you can feel the steering wheel pull. So you've got to be careful and take it slow and just do not rush this morning. We also saw some of the overhead signs on the freeway from Caltrans that say severe weather hold off on travel until Thursday night. Of course, all of these people likely, of course, have to commute to get into work this morning. So if you are heading out on the road, just know that it will be very slick. You may hit patches of fog in this area along the 15. So just take it slow and, of course, be as safe as possible. Reporting live along the Cajon Pass, Rick Montanez, KCAL News. Yeah, traffic already picking up so early in the morning. Rick, thank you so much. All right, we've got more storm coverage on the way, but now more on the split among House Republicans that's keeping Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy from becoming the next Speaker of the House. KCAL News reporter Tom Wade has the latest on the GOP battle. I think it's probably best um, sorry, let people work through some more. Bakersfield Republican and House Speaker hopeful Kevin McCarthy on day two of what has become a humbling string of historic losses. After six votes, he failed to secure the speakership. And once again, Wednesday night, House members adjourned. I don't think the vote tonight does any okay. difference, but I think vote in the future will. Do you have a, I mean, do you have a deal with those guys right now? No, no, no. Yeah, that's a lot of progress. Does that mean no vote tonight? I, I don't think voting tonight is productive. I think uh, that people work a little more. A speaker has not been elected. More than a dozen members are preventing McCarthy from reaching a majority, despite receiving several concessions from the GOP leader. Republican Dan Bishop of North Carolina is one of the no votes. I think this is really widespread in America that the place is broken. Bishop, along with other so-called rebels, want to limit the power of the speaker and rein in spending. Bishop says there was an idea floated to help break the stalemate, but he wouldn't reveal it. I'm afraid if we say if I say it out loud, I'll jinx the process. Claremont McKenna professor of politics, Jack Pitney. Republicans are going to come out of this with bruised feelings. Uh, McCarthy's going to know who stood against him. Uh, a lot of words were exchanged, both in public and private. The Republicans are not stronger as a result of this process. Democrats are already pouncing. How do you think people are perceiving what they're what they're seeing play out? Well, they're seeing a Republican Party in disarray. They're seeing an ultra. These are folks that are voting against McCarthy. They're to the right of Donald Trump. As someone who ran in a Biden plus 13 district, you know, I, I don't take for granted how hard it is to win these swing seats. And, uh, you know, it, it, and, and the majorities aren't made by Texas and Florida. The majorities are, are made by these swing districts like what we saw in California, New York. Several names have been thrown around as possible alternatives to McCarthy, like Steve Scalise from Louisiana, but he has not thrown his hat in the ring. He is McCarthy's number two. So unless McCarthy were to step aside, it's hard to see him stepping forward. In the newsroom, I'm Tom Waite, KCAL News. Okay, the time now 438 before the worst of the storm arrived yesterday, a surprise along the Southern California coastline. We'll tell you why crews sprung into action so quickly when this sailboat washed ashore in Santa Barbara. Also, the latest on the bill safety Demar Hamlin, who remains in critical condition and why there's a glimmer of optimism coming from the team. We'll be right back on KCAL News Mornings. Welcome back to KCAL Mornings. You are taking a live look at LAX. Not too much traffic at least not out right there. Now. Right, Which at least not good. right now, but you can see just how rainy it is out there. Okay, we told you earlier about the mandatory evacuations in the burn scar areas of Santa Barbara County. Well, now, Chris, you have more on what crews mm -hmm. found on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, the storm so powerful, it sent a sailboat crashing on a beach. Take a look. A little withered, but yeah, luckily no one was on board. So after the vessel was swept ashore, it wasn't on the coastline for very long. Now, John Paltamari has more on this rare site. 
ripped from an offshore anchorage, this boat was one of two that slammed into the Santa Barbara and Montecito coast. These boats pose a danger on many levels if they're left on the beach. For toxins going to the ocean, environmentally, we got to get them out of here as soon as possible. And as soon as this one's cleared, there's another one straight up the beach that we've been dismantling. It's been there three days. Same thing, we took gas off of it. We don't want that stuff going out into the environment. Yeah, the power of Mother Nature, but just so bizarre to see. And I mean, here locally in Southern California, I mean, look at the radar behind us, yeah. all the rain. And we were just talking with Olga that um, LA and Ventura counties are in the right. worst of the storm right now. Heading uh, it's to Orange continue. County, yes. IE. Exactly. So we'll send it over to Olga with the very latest on what we can expect from this storm this morning. Yes, if you are at home and getting ready to head out on the roads, uh, be careful out there because we are seeing some pockets of some very heavy rain, especially where you see those yellows and those oranges. Currently, we are seeing that over the LA area for parts of the San Gabriel Valley out through La Crescenta, even the Santa Clarita Valley. We're seeing some heavy rain there. And uh, again, through the San Gabriel's, those foothill areas, look at that. All those yellows and oranges indicating some of those really heavy rain cells. And all of this is spreading east. For our mountain areas, we are seeing plenty of snow right with all those resorts, especially the highest peak. So the good news with this is that it's not really expected to impact those mountain passes. This is going to be high elevation snow. That, of course, is great news for the Sierra Nevada getting more for our snowpack. Here's a look. So again, LA and Ventura, that is the area that right now is being heavily impacted with that heavy rain. As we head a little bit further east, the IE Orange County, yeah, we're starting to get some light showers uh, becoming a little bit more moderate in the next half hour hour. But as we continue through the morning, you are going to start getting some of that heavy stuff as well. So be careful out there on the roads. I'm going to take you hour by hour and show you what you can expect through the morning. So here's a look at our satellite radar tracker. We're going to go through this together. And as we head into the six o'clock hour, still some pockets of heavy rain out through Fraser Park. If you're traveling through the I-5, you aren't expecting to get a lot of snow out there. However, be aware we have some very strong gusty winds through that area. We're looking at some heavy rain again through LA. And as we continue into the seven o'clock hour, a lot of people are going to be out on the roads and look at that heavy rain making its way into parts of the Inland Empire and continuing to spread east as we head into the eight o'clock hour by nine, nine thirty. Look at that very heavy rain across the San Bernardino County mountains mixed in with some snow. And by 1030, things are kind of improving a little bit for parts of LA and Ventura as that storm continues to push east, but then some heavy rain once again as we head into the afternoon hours. So by two o'clock in the afternoon, LA, Santa Clarita Valley, up into the Antelope Valley, also experiencing some strong winds, looking at some heavy rain at the afternoon hour. And then as we head a little bit further east into parts of the Inland Empire, down into Temecula, we're going to continue to see those uh, heavy rain cells pushing through. Here's a look at your commute home. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. We're looking at some drier conditions, uh, still some spotty showers out through parts of Orange County and into the Coachella Valley, some snow showers as well. And then by Thursday night, here we are at 930 in the evening. We're seeing some cloudy skies, but really most of us are going to be clearing out. And for your Friday, if you want to make any outdoor plans, uh, that is going to be the day to do so. We're looking at uh, some clear conditions. So finally, a little bit of a break uh, from all this rain. And even as we continue into your Saturday, so uh, we will get some dry weather. It is on the way. I do have more rain for you, though, in the extended forecast. Want to show you some of the watches and warnings we have in place. So winter storm warning, that's going to be across mountain areas because we are expecting some significant snow. This is really at the higher elevation. So again, passes not really expected to be heavily impacted, but all of us under a flood watch. And that is really because we're expecting those periods of heavy rain that could bring us some flooding issues. For those recent burn areas, we are talking mud and debris flood. So definitely, if you live in any of those areas, just be aware of that, that we could be looking at some really dangerous conditions. As far as the winds, yes, that is another impact from this major powerful storm. High wind warning, that's in effect for parts of the I-5 through the grapevine. We're talking gusts nearing 70 80 miles per hour, so really dangerous conditions. And for a lot of the rest of us, under a wind advisory, still gusts in that 40 to 50 mile per hour range, and we're going to keep that through the day. 
along the coastline, high surf advisory and even coastal flood advisory because once that elevated surf coincides with the high tide, we're looking at really dangerous waves for Ventura Harbor. We're talking up to 15 foot sets. So uh, just be aware of that. I know a lot of surfers like to go out when it is elevated surf, but it is going to be dangerous, especially if you are not an experienced swimmer. Temperatures as you head out the door. Yeah, grab the umbrella, but also take that heavy coat because it is cool out there. We're talking some 40s, still upper 40s through Saugus. We have plenty of 50s uh, across our region, still in the 30s for Big Bear City. And as we take a look at temperatures this afternoon, not expecting a lot of warming as expected. Low 60s for beaches, LA Inland Orange County, mid to upper 50s for the valleys as well as the Inland Empire. 54 in the high desert, 36 degrees in the mountains. Again, we are getting some snow, heavy snow for the Sierra Nevada. We are talking one to two feet. So we are looking at a lot of rain and a lot of snow. Of course, much needed across here in Southern California. Uh, but I'll continue tracking this for you throughout the morning. For now, we're going to take a look at the roads. Kalina, I know you have been busy with this today. Yeah, we both have. Um, a lot of people are um, spinning out right now. We've seen that all morning. We have the wet roads. You can see here on the camera, 55 North and southbound right at Warner. This is through Orange County. Lots of brake lights here in the northbound direction. We typically see that, but it's building even earlier. I mean, it's only 449 right now, so we're seeing some delays here already. Um, other parts of Orange County also starting to slow down, but our big problems this morning are in Los Angeles. So the westbound side of the 134 right at the 5, we have a car that lost control there. Carpool lane currently blocked off. You can see this slight backup there. It's going to continue to build because this might be here for a while. I'll continue to watch it for you and let you know as soon as it clears up. We also have this one, two car crash eastbound 105 at Wilmington Avenue. You can see the slowdown here in both directions. Crews there are holding traffic lanes to get the cars out of the way. I just learned that they just lifted that, but traffic is still recovering because the crash is still over on the shoulder. So if you do want to take the 91 as an alternate route, that's not a bad option for you this morning. And we're still watching this. So we have a full freeway closure. That's the black that you're seeing right here. That's showcasing that it's off limits. You can't access it at all. This this is all because of flooding we have there this morning. So the eastbound 90 right now from Lincoln to the 405, that is off limits. We also have the westbound 90 from Slauson to Lincoln. That is also closed down right now. But we do have alternate routes for you this morning. You can use Washington or Jefferson Boulevard to go ahead and get around that delay there. Travel times for you this morning on the 15 freeway. If you're going to be driving through the Cajon Pass, I looked at a couple cameras. We are seeing traffic there. Looks like there might be some fog in that area as well. 12 minute commute right now between the 395 and the 138. So far, the rest of LA, Orange County, IE, not too bad volume wise. Guys. Okay, Kalina, thanks so much. To our north, Bay Area Swift Water Rescue Teams have been called out because of this system. You can see in this video we're about to show you that firefighters are pulling a homeless man to safety. This happened oh, wow. in Los Gatos Creek in San Jose after he fell in last night. According to the man's girlfriend, he was trying to grab some of their belongings when he slipped and fell. Fire rescue crews were able to throw him a rope to pull him out. Thankfully, he did not appear to be hurt. Meantime, closer to home, both the LA County Fire and LA Fire Departments have additional swift water rescue crews ready to go. They'll be watching the normal hot spots really closely, including the LA River, Sepulveda Basin, and Hanson Dam. An extra helicopter is also on standby to assist with any possible efforts today. And back in the Bay Area last night, a family was trapped in their car after a large tree fell on it. Crews had to cut the tree into smaller pieces with chainsaws to rescue them. No one was injured in that incident. Meantime, in another part of San Francisco, a tree actually did fall down onto a person. Firefighters were able to perform similar rescue efforts, cutting the tree up and take that person to a trauma center. And we've learned that person is in critical condition. Yeah, it just goes to show how dangerous these atmospheric rivers can be. So we definitely Absolutely. have a lot more rain to come. All right, everyone, moving right along this morning. Time now, 452. We're getting an update on Bill's safety, Damar Hamlin, who remains in critical condition. Why there's now a glimmer of hope after his collapse during Monday Night Football. We'll be right back.
physical condition, but he has showed signs of improvement. That's according to the team. Yeah, Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest during the Buffaloes game on Monday night against Cincinnati. And the bill said that he is expected to remain in the ICU at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. Hamlin collapsed on the field moments after tackling a Bengals receiver. He received CPR and his heartbeat was restored on the field before being taken away in an ambulance. The game was ultimately suspended. Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow spoke for the first time about the emotions of being on the field when all of this unfolded. Nobody wanted to continue to play the game in a in a situation like that, and uh, you know, I know how everybody would be feeling in our locker room. If it was if it was one of our guys, and I know how we were feeling, and it was one of their guys. Uh, so it was uh, a scary, emotional night. Yeah, scary to say the least, and uh, we just wish him the best in his recovery yes. because just awful to see. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, they are looking for blue skies and bright futures. Our latest STEAM profile focuses on engineering and math. KCAL News reporter Alex Bisson takes us inside a Pacoima program preparing the next generation of aircraft builders. The hammering, the planning, inspecting, and double checking. Just another Saturday for youth with big dreams. I want to fly an airplane. At Pacoima's Whiteman Airport, the Experimental Aircraft Association, or EAA, is training the next generation of aviators. This is the EAA's Young Eagles program. Private pilot Dave Kolstad helps run it. We were getting ready for kids to actually build a real airplane. Stay level. Go ahead. 16 year old Alicia Kenline fell in love with aviation two years ago. It happened when she took a young Eagles free flight for kids. And now we're building a two seater plane with adult supervision. These kids are doing it all. I was expecting, OK, maybe I'll get to do a few rivets here and there. Maybe it'll let me drill here. But no, they've let all of us become invested in almost every single part of this build. What Alicia has learned from the pros, she's now teaching to Eagles new to the program. We get a gap. That gap creates vibration. And we get a problem. Of all the STEAM disciplines, airplane building relies most on engineering and math. Watching pieces come together that are eventually going to support flight pretty amazing. Much more fun than just looking at numbers on a worksheet. When you're first starting to learn fractions, you think, ah, oh, who cares? But when you've got a drill bit in your hand and you've got to get the right size, you do care and you learn. Before this, everything was a dream. Pieces of things that had no tangibility. And I started coming here and actually being able to connect with what I wanted to do later in life. Finally, school stuff was starting to make sense in something. Her goal now? I want to work more in engineering. And if I get a chance, I'd like to be an astronaut. Any part of aviation she wants. Yeah, she can almost write her own ticket. And with more jobs in aviation than there are people trained to do them, Dave says the same will be true for everyone here who sticks with this work. His message to youth looking for a hands-on, high-flying STEAM education. Just get outside of your iPad or whatever and see that there's a whole world out there that you're not familiar with. Alex Biston, KCAL 9 News. It was all a dream. I and, love that. He's and like, look at them now. Well, and he said, get off the iPad, go out and see right. there's a whole world out there. That is just awesome. There really is. Well, she is our future. So, hey, you're an inspiration to all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are tracking this major storm hitting the Southland this morning. You can see on the radar behind us, uh, Olga Ospina says that the strongest part of this storm is right now for L.A. Right. and Ventura County. So she is tracking the latest forecast. Kalina Estrinos is watching the roads for us and all of the issues we're seeing there Ooh. as we take a live look right now at a very rainy downtown Los Angeles. We'll be right back. Back. AM and streaming on CBS News Los Angeles. I'm Marcy Gonzalez. Yeah, welcome to our new home. Very exciting. Good morning, everyone. Happy rainy Thursday. I'm Chris Holmstrom. All right, you look behind us. There's a lot going on in your world today, but there are some major stories that we're following. Some communities on edge. And a live look at a soggy downtown LA right now. We are tracking the movement of the storm to get you ready for the day. We anticipate that this may be one of the most challenging and impactful series of storms to touch down in California 
in the last five years. Yeah, just to give you an idea of how powerful this storm is. California is now under a state of emergency, all because of this weather. Now, it's to support response and recovery efforts if need be. The State Emergency Operations Center says this storm will likely trigger flooding, mudslides, also widespread power outages. And we have team coverage across our region keeping an eye on the conditions and how it could impact you this morning. But first, let's send it over to Olga Espina. And Olga, where is the storm hitting hardest right now? Marcy and Chris, as we've been talking about, LA and Ventura currently getting the brunt of this storm. We're looking at some cells that are bringing some very heavy rain. That is all pushing to the east. So parts of the Inland Empire and Orange County are going to be hit next. And uh, we're talking still several more hours of this uh, steady rain, heavy at times. We're seeing some snow up in the mountains. And uh, through some of those passes, we're looking at some really strong gusty winds. If you travel through the I-5 today, through the grapevine, expect gusts in the 60, 70, even 80 mile per hour range. We're looking at elevated surf, so a lot to get to with this major storm across Southern California on this Thursday, and I'll keep tracking that for you all morning long. For now, we're going to take a look at the roads. Uh, Kalina is tracking all of that for you in your next traffic. Yeah, Good the, morning. The wet weather is impacting the roadways here. We have flooding in certain parts of the area, so we do want to start off with a look at our map right now because we are tracking flooding on the 101s. This is northbound side of the 101 freeway right at Van Nuys Boulevard. You can see the little indicator there. We're seeing a little bit of a backup as well as you approach this area. So you might want to give yourself extra time. Actually, just give yourself extra time throughout the entire day today or just stay off the roadways because we keep on seeing stuff like this happen. So 101 southbound right at Lancashire Boulevard. We have the left lanes blocked off here. This is the car that lost control. Slight backup there as well. Uh, here's what it looks like in our Caltrans camera. You can see the five right at Lakewood. It is slowing down out there already. It's only 5.05 in the morning typically. It doesn't have this high of volume, but you can see the slick roads there and lots of cars. Take it easy today. Overview of LA for you. Orange County checking in pretty quiet right now. Same thing goes for the Inland Empire. And we have one more problem spot to tell you about. We have a full freeway closure. This is on the eastbound 90 from Lincoln to the 405. Also on the westbound 90 from Slauson to Lincoln. And Marcy Chris, that of course is because of the flooding we're seeing. Yeah, the best advice, Kalina, take it easy. Yes. And as Olga said, we're in the peak of this massive storm. It's been raining for hours, and it's not letting up. KCAL News reporter Tina Patel is live in Van Nuys with the latest on what's happening there. Tina. Good morning. Yeah, we are seeing that heavy rain coming down right now, and it is causing some problems on the road, like Kalina was just saying. We're on Burbank Boulevard, just near the Sepulveda Dam, and you can see that they have put out some markers, uh, some barricades, letting people know that the road is starting to flood. But unfortunately, a lot of drivers still are not realizing just how much water is pulling up. We'll watch as this car goes by. The problem is, is that they're still uh, not slowing down enough, not realizing exactly how deep that water is. Fortunately, we haven't seen anybody get stuck, and fortunately, this is still early in the morning, so there's not a lot of traffic out here, but this has been a problem. Also a problem on the freeway. About an hour ago, we were on the 101 at the Van Nuys exit, and that is when they actually had to close a couple of right-hand lanes because of flooding there. Caltrans crews got out. They were working on kind of the storm drain to, to get the water to, to kind of recede a little bit, and that now is completely open. But these are the problems that we're expecting to see throughout the morning. So whether you are taking service streets this morning or whether you're going to be heading on the freeway, if you are going to be on the roads, just keep your eyes open. There's oftentimes when it's still dark where you really can't tell just how much water is on the roadways. So slow down, give everyone around you a little bit extra space, and hopefully we can get through this storm in this morning commute safely. We'll send it back to you. You know, that is a great reminder. I actually hit one of those patches on the way in where you couldn't oh, see that there was water there. It makes you realize the power of water on the roads. Yes, exactly. Well, there is a tense watch in the San Gabriel Valley where rain is hitting and the burn areas are particularly vulnerable. KCAL 9's Cara Finstrom is live in Duarte with the very latest on the situation there. Cara. Yeah, and as you can see, the rain really coming down now. It was light the last time we saw you, but uh, this is very heavy rain. The longer it comes down, the greater the concern for homes like these here. There's about 25 homes here on Mel Canyon Road that are under a yellow alert uh, because of concerns that the hillsides above, which were damaged last summer by a fire, could give way. Now, take a look. One of the precautions they've taken, no parking, no trash cans on Mel Canyon Road right now because if there is a muddy flow that rushes down this street, Street, uh, it would become very dangerous, could pick up those cars and bring them down. Uh, let's give you a look at some video that was shot showing you some of the 
K-rails that have been installed in a number of vulnerable San Gabriel Valley areas. Firefighters, they have also uh, gotten their swift water rescue equipment ready to go, and extra crews are patrolling all area burn scars. Here in Doherty, neighbors remember the issues a major mud flow caused back in 2016 after a fire then. Not the very last storm, but the storm before this one, it poured. And I didn't think anything of it. I went into my backyard to pull some plants, and I fell in a sinkhole. All the way down to my, my uh, knee here. So I'm, I'm not as worried as I, I was then. They're, they're all ready. Doherty City is just ready. And they have staffed up also with extra deputies who will be patrolling all of these streets. Uh, we have seen a couple of them already this morning, keeping watch, making sure that nothing comes down. We'll keep you updated uh, and we'll be checking in with them throughout the morning. Yeah, Carl, talking about those K-Rolls, I noticed them driving through Laurel Canyon this morning. Some K-Rolls there just in case as well. So, all right, thanks for that report. We'll check in with you. So, drivers, they're facing dangerous conditions this morning. The roads, they're slick, and we could face some flooding in some areas. Let's go to KCAL 9's Rick Montanez. He continues our live coverage in the Cajon Pass. And, Rick, how are things looking right now? I know Olga says the storm is moving that way. So, right now, um, they're preparing. Yeah, Chris, we are feeling the rain. There is a lot of rain on the road right now. I'll switch camera. Heading south, uh, right by Cleghorn Road, and traffic is picking up. The rain is picking up. And then as I've been talking about, we also have been running into patches of fog and then, of course, pooling water on the freeway. So very con uh, tricky conditions out here for people who are using the Cajon Pass as the morning commute. Uh, uh, hopefully some people are starting their commute early so they can take some extra time. Uh, about 20 minutes ago, we talked with a driver. She and her sister were following each other on their road to Utah, actually, but they had to pull over because conditions were just too tough. So take a listen to what she had to say a few minutes ago. We're actually trying to drive to Utah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so it's kind of like delaying us a lot. You think you'll make it today? No, <laughs> definitely not. I told my sister, I was like, we're not driving. I'm too scared. Yeah, so they were pulling over because it just was too intense, probably canceling their road trip for the day. And again, you're looking live here on the 15 southbound, just south of Cleghorn Road. And uh, traffic is starting to fill out a little bit, but the rain certainly coming down. Conditions are... And as I mentioned, we also are running into patches of fog, things like that. So a lot to deal with as you head out this morning. Just try to be careful. Reporting live along the Cajon Pass, Rick Montanez, KCAL News. Okay, Rick, thanks so much. And now let's send it back to Olga Ospina with a look at where the storm is impacting now. Yes. Uh, hi, good morning, you guys. Uh, Rick is lucky he is inside that car. However, driving conditions not really ideal this morning, even into the afternoon hour. So you can see right behind me still a very active radar and as we've been talking about right now through LA and Ventura we are seeing the brunt of this storm and that's going to continue to push to the east so uh, parts of the San Gabriel Valley also really being heavily impacted at the moment some of those foothill areas and as we continue through the morning that's going to continue to push out to the IE in Orange County some snow for those higher elevations those resorts are going to be looking glorious as we head into later in the week driving out there not so great right now at least for today wait until tomorrow if you can. Here's a look at the big picture so you can see that the IE in Orange County some light to moderate rain but you'll be getting that heavy rain as well as we head into the next hour or two. So we'll take you through that satellite radar tracker and show you that rain continuing to push to the east. Some of the other impacts of course we are feeling are those gusty winds. We have elevated surf and also because of all this rain that we have a flood watch is in effect really for all of us but especially those recent burn areas are are at risk of mud and debris flow. So I'll continue tracking all your weather for you this morning on KCAL News. Back to you. Olga, thank you. And I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but please take it easy out there. The amount of incidents we're seeing this morning um, is unreal. So just if you have to head out, 
slow down, keep plenty of space between you and the car in front of you, and just be cautious. We want to start off the live look outside right now. This is a 91 right at 3rd Street. You can see the wet roads. Luckily, not a lot of traffic here, so that's the good news. We do have this problem, though, that just popped up. 405 northbound right at Carson Street. Another car lost control hit the shoulder. Uh, it's trying to be cleared to the shoulder right now, so give yourself extra time here. We're seeing a delay now as you leave the 710. You can take the 91 as an alternate route instead. Another car lost control here, northbound 605 right at Del Amo Boulevard. Not causing a backup yet, but I'll watch this for you and let you know if that does happen. We still have flooding. 101 heading north. This is right at Van Nuys Boulevard. Slight delay there. And another car, another spun out here. This is a 101 heading southbound this time. Lancashire Boulevard. Left lanes are blocked off here. Now, Orange County, if you live there, looks great so far. We're seeing some volume out there, but overall no crashes to report. Same thing goes for the majority of the Inland Empire, but I'll be tracking all of the activity for you throughout the morning. Chris Marcy, back to you. All right, Kalina, thank you so much. All right, first day in our new home for KCAL Mornings, and we're hit with a story that affects everyone. Uh, That's right. It's but a mess we've up. We've got it all covered We've got it all covered for you. for you. All right, everyone, time now, 514. Flood dangers, they're already leading to evacuations in Montecito. A look at the damage there. Plus more on this heart-stopping moment, a massive tree falls on a car with a family inside. And through the storm's dark clouds, there is a silver lining for California. Take a look at your screen right now. Yep, that's good for our drought, it's good for skiers and snowboarders. We'll be right back, everyone. orders were issued for parts of Montecito and yesterday volunteers were there helping to fill sandbags. We want to help our local community and we know, you know what happened a few years ago sure. and so we just want to be able to prepare our, our residents. Yeah, you can never be too prepared. So evacuation orders, they are in place across other burn areas of Santa Barbara County as well. Well, through all the dark clouds, there is a silver snowy lining. Of course, that's the snowpack in the Sierra Nevada mountains, vital to the state's water supply. It's now 174% of the average for this state. On average, the Sierra snowpack supplies about 30% of California's water needs. The above average readings are similar to last January and January of 2013. In both of those cases, though, California saw drought conditions by the end of the year. Yeah, we're such in a, a big hole for our drought that we just need more of this. And uh, hopefully that snowpack just continues to build and build. But let's go to back to Olga Ospina, who's tracking the weather here inland. I know Ventura and L.A. counties are getting hit the hardest, but it's moving to the east. Yeah, Inland Empire, Orange County, all of us are going to be impacted by this today. And speaking of that snowpack, so snow levels uh, with this storm are going to be pretty high. So our local mountains will see a few inches of snow, but for the Sierra Nevada, we're talking potentially a foot, two feet of snow because uh, all that snow is going to be falling in those really highest peaks that we see out there. And of course, that benefits us here locally. We get that snow melt into our local reservoirs that uh, come spring and summer when we don't get that rain. So much needed and we're getting a soaking here across Southern California as well this morning. Look at that. That storm continues to move from the west to the east. So we're starting to see some of those pockets of rain moving into parts of the Inland Empire. We continue to see that moving east as we take a look at our satellite radar. You can see yes, uh, parts of the IE, especially those mountain areas, uh, getting some of that rain where you see those yellows, those oranges, those reds that indicates that those heavy rain cells and really some dangerous conditions. If you are driving, if you're about to get on the road, just be aware of this, that that will definitely impact your commute. As we take a look at mountain areas, we are looking at plenty of snow out there. Again, keep in mind, this is very high elevation snow. At least the good news is a lot of those major passes, places like the grapevine, will not really be impacted by this. As we take a look at the big picture, look at that. Uh, parts of the IE still seeing some dry weather, even parts of Orange County just getting some light to moderate rain at the moment, but we'll continue to see that intensify as we continue through the morning. And I'll take you through that satellite radar tracker and 
and show you what it's going to look like at the 6 a.m. hour. We're still seeing some pockets of heavy rain out through the LA area and uh, even out through the I-5 through Fraser Park, continuing to push east. And by the 7 a.m. hour, this is going to be busy commute time for sure. And look at that heavy rain for parts of LA moving into the Inland Empire, continuing to spread east. And we're looking at parts of Orange County also being impacted. Here we are 930 in the morning, seeing some very heavy rain. So plan accordingly. Even when you see some breaks in the rain, know that it is still going to be wet most of the day as we take you through 10 a.m. Look at that. A lot of rain out through the Inland Empire and some of those foothills and mountain areas. And by 11 a.m. still seeing some of that heavy rain. We have another wave of energy to talk about because because even if you see some dry conditions through LA and Ventura doesn't mean we are done with the rain quite yet. So I'll continue tracking this for you the entire morning. For now, we're going to take a look at the roads. Kalina Strino is tracking that for us in your next traffic report. And that's coming up in just a few minutes. For now, back to you, Chris and Marcy. Okay, Olga, thanks so much. The time now 521 and our storm coverage continues, but we do have some other headlines to get to. Yeah, we're talking about conflict. It's continuing at the Capitol. There's still no speaker. The statement, it's already impacting the functions of Congress. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. And right there is Pope Francis praying over the coffin. Now, this was a historic moment with Pope Francis presiding over his predecessor's funeral in St. Peter's Square. Among the tens of thousands of mourners who gathered, more than 400 bishops and nearly 4,000 priests from all over the world made it for the ceremony. During the Mass, Pope Francis hailed Benedict as a faithful friend. Pope Benedict died last Saturday at the age of 95. Well, it's deja vu on Capitol Hill. Still no speaker of the House and representatives will try now for a third day to secure a bid. Congressman Kevin McCarthy lost his sixth bid yesterday and after meeting behind closed doors for nearly three hours last night, McCarthy told reporters he didn't believe another vote would have a different outcome. The California Republican is still falling about 15 votes short of the 218 he needs to take the gavel. Members of his party are pushing for stronger checks on whoever leads the chamber. You got to have ultimately a tool through the rules committee or other positions of power it vacates part of that to say, damn it, stop doing that. We're not going to allow that to occur. The contrast between House Democrats on the chaos and confusion taking place on the other side of the aisle could not be more clear. For the first time in 100 years, there was not an agreement for Speaker of the House. And yesterday, former President Trump wrote on Truth Social Media urging those Republicans to vote for McCarthy and added that he would do a good job. McCarthy again said he has no plans to step aside. Good morning, everyone. We are tracking a powerful storm across Southern California. And yes, this is going to impact all of us really throughout the day. We're already seeing some pockets of some very heavy rain outside. So as we take a look at our satellite radar tracker, you can see a lot of that uh, moving through the Santa Clarita Valley into L.A. and even parts of the Inland Empire. This storm is going to continue to push to the east and bring us some significant rain when this is all said and done for some mountain areas we could be talking five, six inches of rain. Very heavy snow across mountain areas also, especially those highest peaks. Gusty winds and elevated surf. So I'll show you all those watches and warnings in place in just a few minutes. Olga, thank you so much. Our team coverage continues. We're live across Southern California showing you the different angles of this passing storm. Plus, California is now under a state of emergency. What this means for the state coming up.
That frees up resources and allows Newsom to call on the National Guard and also funds for any possible repairs. It also opens up the Emergency Operations Center where everything that is happening with this storm is monitored in real time. Yeah, that just shows you how powerful this storm is. Yeah. And because of that, we've got team coverage across our region, keeping an eye on the conditions and how it may impact you this morning. Now, let's first send it over to Olga Espina. Olga, you're tracking the storm. Where is it right now? Hi, Chris and Marcy. Yes, uh, we are seeing the brunt of that storm out through parts of LA and Ventura. That is going to continue to push east. Even parts of the Inland Empire seeing some heavy rain as well. Want to show you watches and warnings because we have a flood watch in place. And really, that is going to be for all of us because of the very intense heavy rain we are expected. And uh, that's going to continue really throughout much of the day. Winter storm warning up in the mountains still through early tomorrow. That is because of all that heavy snow we are expecting as well and some wind warnings. I'm going to get to that in just a moment, but just know it is going to be a wet commute this morning. If you are headed out the door, take the umbrella, leave early because those roads are a mess, some steady rain and again some pockets of very heavy rain as well. So we'll have more details on this big storm as we continue through the morning. For now, we're going to take a look at the roads. Kalina Strino is tracking that for us in the next traffic report. And there are signs all over freeways across Southern California reminding you, hey, stay off the road if you can because the storm is dangerous out there. We've already seen several incidents this morning, slowing traffic down. A couple cars spun out, so we want to go out to our camera first. You can see the wet conditions here, 22 east and westbound right at Magnolia. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the volume looks good, but of course we could see some changes here uh, shortly. Five northbound right at Garfield. We have a car that lost control. The right lane is blocked off. You can see that delay now off of the 605. You can take though an alternate route this morning. Uh, 101 heading southbound right at Lancashire and we have left lanes blocked off. This is also because of a car that lost control here, so that's also causing a delay. 101 northbound right at Van Nuys Boulevard. We still have that flooding we're tracking for you. An overview though of the rest of Orange County, not too bad by any means when it comes to any congestion. The 15 heading southbound though, we actually have a reporter in this area. Uh, it's gonna take you about 16 minutes to get through. That's between the 395 and the 138. Marcy, Chris. All right, Kalina, thank you. And the ground is already so saturated that any amount of rain can cause immediate flooding in some areas. Yeah, KCAL 9, Sita Patel, uh, she's live in Van Nuys where the water is quickly starting to rise. What's it look like where you're at, Tina? Yeah, good morning. We're in the Sepulveda Basin and just in a little bit that we have been here, we have been seeing the water rise on the side of the road. It is kind of creeping more towards the road. Now, already there are a couple of inches here. We were showing you earlier the barricades and actually if you kind of zoom down the street and see those flashing lights, police are here and they have now closed this area, Sepulveda and Burbank. Oftentimes Burbank, it's not a busy street, but it's one of those streets that people use to kind of uh, get around the freeway if it's too busy. This road right now looks like it's it's going to be completely closed for the next few hours. We have some video that shows you what it was looking like a little bit earlier, and I think the problem is because it is so dark, it is hard for drivers to realize just how much water is pulling up on the, the surface of the road. So they're starting to go through here, and it's kind of only when they're halfway through that they realize that there are several inches on the roadway. And uh, unfortunately, we, we know from past storms that it only takes about six inches of water for there to create some problems with flooding and cars getting stuck. So right now, Burbank at Sepulveda is closed down while we get this storm, while we get this heavy rain. We're going to stay here, continue to kind of monitor the conditions and let you know just how much flooding we're seeing on these surface streets. But again, as we've been saying all morning, if these are the roads that you normally take for your commute, give yourself uh, some extra time, head out the door if you can early and slow down and really keep your eyes open. Because again, while it is still dark, it's kind of hard to tell just how much water is on the roads. We'll send it back to you. Yeah, especially with the fact that it's so dark. Tina, thank you so much. Well, the San Gabriel Valley, another potential trouble spot with all this rainfall. There are recently burned areas in particular danger. Kate Cowles, Cara Finstrom is live in Doherty with the latest on the situation there. Cara, good morning. Good, good morning, Chris. We are getting wet. The rain has continued to fall out here. Up above, that's where those hillsides are that were damaged by last summer's uh, fish fire. And so these have been reinstalled, these KCALs, uh, these 
K rails and you can see they go all the way up the street. We can pan over and you can see they are on the other side of the street as well. Uh, there's about 25 homes here that are of particular concern here in the Doherty area and so they are under a yellow alert. This is along Mill Canyon Road. This is where any muddy rush from the hillsides would likely head. So this area under that alert until tomorrow morning. Now yesterday community volunteers they did go door to door here warning families about this storm. Local leaders not expecting major mud flows. Area firefighters say they will be ready to go with swift water gear and park cars and trash cans not allowed on this road. Locals say they're going into the storm with fingers crossed. A month ago, if you would have looked up here on the hill, it was brown, just brown and black. Now it's green, which is a good thing because I think things are growing again. Grass is growing again and, and little creatures will come back and, and live and eat off that. Road crews will be patrolling the roads for any mud flow, rock fall, uh, down trees along uh, county roadways. This will take place in the foothill communities up into the, the mountain roads. And numerous precautions have been taken throughout the San Gabriel Valley because of the intensity, the duration of the rain expected today. Neighbors here tell me uh, that they are very glad that these K rails are back in place. They remember the big storm they had here in 2016 after an earlier summer fire and the all the damage that it caused down here for homes. Back to you. Cara, thank you. And driving is really tough out there this morning. I had a rough commute in yeah, because same. the roads are so slick. It's so dark. And, and Tina mentioned this in her report. It's hard to see right. where there's some pooling and you can easily have spin outs and all kinds of issues. Also road closures like Clean has been talking about. Right. I know Laurel Canyon has been doing K rolls as well, just in case of potential uh, mudslides as well. So you want to make sure to watch Kalina's forecasts because you never know how that could affect your commute. Speaking of commute, let's go to KCAL's Rick Montanez. He continues our live team coverage. He's along the 15 at the Cajon Pass with the look of the conditions. And Rick, it was already busy early this morning, so a lot of people getting a head start because they know what rain can do to our area. Yeah, hopefully they are starting their commutes early because, like you said, it will be a tough one. Look at the 15 right now. This is uh, the side closest to us. Those are the southbound lanes of the 15. We are just north of Fontana right now. And as you were talking about, I mean, this commute is difficult here in the Inland Empire. Even driving out here to get here to our assignment, we could feel the puddles of water, the pooling of water that, of course, uh, has an impact on the drive out here. So you have to be careful. We also saw a couple of spin outs. One car the CHP was already tending to after it spun out. The front end, the back end were both damaged, so likely it hit the, the guardrail. So dangerous conditions. We actually met somebody uh, just a short time ago, this woman and her sister who were on a road trip but decided it was coming down too much and they just had to pull over. Take a listen. Super windy. Uh, my car is like all over the place and my I keep on hydroplaning. It's kind of crazy. It's you know, scary. My sister's behind me the whole time. She's like, oh my God, freaking out. Yeah, you can imagine what that's like. And then look at here, this tow truck driver helping out this big rig. So these guys uh, will certainly be busy this morning. We've seen quite a few of them out along the freeway helping out drivers. So we got to imagine that uh, the commute will take you longer this morning and will be much more dangerous than it usually is because just like that, you can run into one of those puddles or standing water on the freeway. And then, of course, you feel the steering wheel pull or your brakes or your tires adjusting to that. So you just want to give yourself some extra time. Live in Fontana, Rick Montanelli. today it makes yeah we'll get up an extra hour earlier because of the road conditions yeah, just so just drive so slowly rick thank you stay dry out there as as best as possible i know easier said than done all right so right now we are going to send it to kalina with a look at uh, the road conditions. Kalina, good morning. And you guys, thank you for telling everyone to slow down and leave early or just stay off the roads because we're seeing so many problems this morning, including this one. So we have a full freeway closure right now. This is a Sigler. It will be here for an unknown amount of time. They're not giving us a timestamp on this. So eastbound side of the 10 right at Kellogg. Again, all lanes off limits. A couple cars crashed together here. They're working to get this cleared, but that black indicates that it's shut down entirely. So we do 
do have alternate routes for you this morning. You can take the 210 freeway as an option, the 60 freeway instead, or we also have West Temple Avenue. Um, also do want to let you know that traffic is trying to be diverted onto the 57 freeway, so you might see some delays in both directions as that starts to happen. Now, as we head on out to this car that lost control, we've seen several of these incidents happening throughout the morning already. Five northbound right at Garfield Avenue. We do have the right lane blocked off that backup now from the 605. Take the 710 instead if you can, because this is just going to continue to build this morning. An overview for you of the rest of Los Angeles. We're still tracking the flooding on the 101 north at Van Nuys, not causing a major backup there. And this is a look at Orange County 22 heading east and westbound right at Magnolia. You can see the wet roads again, though, give yourself extra time. Leave plenty of space in between you and the car in front of you guys. OK, Kalina, thanks so much. The time now 541 coming up. We take our storm coverage to Northern California. Massive downpours leads to this dramatic rescue. We'll have a closer look at the damage in that area when we come back. Is there something that CBS2 News should investigate? Call the CBS2 Investigates tip line at 818-655-2442 or email your tip to cbs2investigates at cbs.com. And good Thursday morning, everyone. You're watching KCON News. Fell in last night. The man's girlfriend says he was trying to grab some of their belongings when he slipped on the bank of the creek. Fire and rescue crews were able to throw him a rope to pull him out, and it appears he escaped without any major injuries. Meantime, closer to home, both the LA County Fire and LA Fire Departments have additional Swiftwater rescue crews ready to go. They'll be monitoring the normal hot spots, including the LA River, Sepulveda Basin, and Hanson Dam. They've also brought in an extra helicopter to help with any possible efforts today. Wow, look at this. Back in the Bay Area last night, a family was trapped in their car after this huge tree fell on it. Crews had to cut the tree into smaller pieces with chainsaws in order to rescue them, but thankfully, no one was injured. It's amazing. Meantime, in another part of San Francisco, a tree actually fell on a person. Mm. Firefighters were able to perform similar rescue efforts. They cut up that tree and they took that person to a trauma center where we're told they're in critical condition. Oh, that's awful to hear. Um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our local weather right now. Olga has been tracking that forecast. Olga, what's it looking like? Where are we at right now? Yeah, hi, Chris and Marcy. We're seeing that powerful storm sweep through Southern California and a very active satellite radar this morning. If you are headed out the door, just leave a little bit early because we are seeing some really slick roads and even some pockets of some really heavy rain. So here's a look at what is happening right now and to take you through hour by hour here in just a moment. First, I'll show you those current conditions. We're seeing some of that heavier rain out through some of those mountain areas uh, for the San Gabriel foothills and mountains up just above the 210 freeway. And yes, some snow across our local mountains, but really it is that high elevation snow. So that Sierra Nevada snowpack is certainly going to be building as we head into today, later in the day, and especially tomorrow. So here we are. Thursday 545 in the morning that heavy rain out through parts of Southern California. Not too bad still through a lot of the Inland Empire, but you are going to be getting a soaking soon as well. I'll take you through hour by hour and show you what it's going to look like as we head into the 6 a.m. hour. So where you see those yellows, oranges and red, that is that heavy rain impacting uh, some parts uh, places like the I-5 corridor through the grapevine. And as we continue through the morning, 730, this is going to be a busy commute time. We are seeing a lot of rain still through the San Gabriels and heading east into parts of the Inland Empire as we continue into the 10 a.m. hour. Still out through the IE, a little bit further south into parts of Orange County, heading into Temecula, and still continuing throughout much of the day, impacting us still in the afternoon hours. So we'll get another wave of energy, bringing us still more rain for the L.A. area and out through parts of the Coachella Valley, Inland Empire, really heavy rain by the afternoon hours. And uh, then things start to clear out, really for that commute home. Mostly it's the eastern portion of our region, places like the IE and Orange County that will 
we'll get that rain. But really, for a lot of us, we're starting to see those drier conditions, and that continues to be the case as we head into late tonight into Friday. If you have any outdoor plans uh, for the weekend, Friday and Saturday are actually looking good and take advantage of it because we are still looking at some more rain in the extended forecast. So we have a number of watches and warnings in place. We have a flood watch across our region, and that's because of all that rain we are expecting. Now, this is really significant rain for mountain areas. We could be talking five, six inches when this is all said and done. Significant amounts also for coasts and valleys. We have a winter storm warning across mountain areas. That is because of all the snow we're expecting. And then high wind warning. That includes places like the I-5 corridor with gusts nearing 70 to 80 miles per hour at some spots and a wind advisory really for most of us. That's going to be 40 50 mile per hour gusts. So definitely take it easy out there. It is going to be a mess on the roads. And I know Kalina, you've been tracking all of this for us at this morning. How are things looking out there? Good morning, Olga. You know, we just have to stress if you don't have to be on the road this morning, just don't work remote. If you can just stay home because we're seeing so many problems pop up. We're still tracking this problem right now. It's a Siglert on the 10. This is heading eastbound right at Kellogg. All lanes are blocked off here. That's the black that you're seeing traffic being diverted to the 57. So if you have to hit the road this morning, be sure to take Temple instead. You can also take the 210 or 60 freeways to go ahead and get around the backup on the 10. Another sig alert here. This is on the 405 northbound right at the 110 right before you approach the 110, I should say. All lanes also blocked off here. This is a car that flipped over. I'm hearing it's on its roof right now. Speeds are down to 17 miles per hour. And you can see, of course, a heavy backup there. No word yet on where traffic is being diverted. All lanes, though, are blocked off. So if you have to head out this morning, you can take the 710 to the 91, then hop back on the 110 freeway. That'll hopefully get around some of those delays. 10 right at Sierra. This is in the Inland Empire. Heavy, heavy volume of cars here. Stop and go traffic in both directions. And we have more incidents to tell you about. I'll update you coming up in my next report, guys. All right, Kalina, thank you so much. Time now, 550. So how big is this storm? Hurricane planes have been called in to track what is being called a bomb cyclone. And we're going to take you for a ride. And there's hope for a potential vaccine this morning against one of the deadliest forms of cancer. The promising news just ahead. I spy reserve command weather squadron, a group of C 130s based in Mississippi that typically hunt hurricanes were in Sacramento yesterday and likely heading to the Bay Area today. They are outfitted with all the meteorological tools needed to get up to the minute weather information. General Motors is back on top as the nation's top auto seller. The company reported that it sold two point 27 million vehicles in the U.S. in 2022. GM's 2.5 percent rise in sales last year was largely driven by purchases of gas-powered trucks and SUVs. The Detroit automaker reclaimed the crown from rival Toyota, which reported 2.1 million, million vehicle sales last year. All right, some bad news for Amazon. There are more job losses ahead for the tech industry. Amazon says it will cut more than 18,000 jobs this year. That is a big increase over last year's initial announcement that around only 10,000 employees would be laid off. 
This comes as cloud computing software company Salesforce says it will cut over 7,000 from its workforce. Salesforce will also be closing some offices. That's according to a regulatory filing. Scientists are finding success turning brain cancer cells into a working vaccine. Doctors at Brigham and Women's Hospital say they took glioblastoma cells in mice and then used gene engineering to turn them into a vaccine that both eliminates tumors and provides long-term immunity. The hope is to develop this technology to make a cancer-killing vaccine that's effective in humans as well. All right, this morning, moving right along. Yeah. Time now, 5.55. Ahead on KCAL News Mornings at 6 and streaming on CBS News Los Angeles, we have continuing live coverage of this powerful storm slamming the Southland. And there's also particular concern in some burn areas. Stay with us. We've got more news in the morning after the break. the CBS Los Angeles app on any device. Local news, sports, weather, video on demand, and CBS News Los Angeles. All in just one tap. Download now.
News Los Angeles. What is the big story this morning? That massive storm that is bearing down on the Southland, bringing heavy rain, strong winds, and fears of flooding. Yeah, we have team coverage all morning long. Our reporters are out in the field chasing that rain and here in the studio. Our assignment manager, Mark Liu, is looking at the latest breaking weather news. Kalina Estrinos is tracking road conditions, but we begin with Olga Espina with your next weather forecast. Olga. Hi, good morning, ladies. And yes, we are tracking a lot of rain across Southern California on this Thursday, and uh, we're going to continue to see it really for several more hours. So as we take a look, you can see a lot of that rain out through the San Gabriel Valley, some of those foothills and mountains getting still some of that rain uh, where you see those yellows that indicates those uh, stronger cells snow up in the mountains. So yes, uh, it is going to be nice out there at the resorts as far as eastern IE not looking too bad yet, uh, but you are going to be getting in on a lot more of that rain as we continue through the morning and even into the afternoon. So I'll take you through that satellite radar tracker. You can see that by 7 a.m. when it is going to be really busy on the roads, we are seeing some pockets of really heavy rain out through uh, some of those uh, foothill areas and moving into the Inland Empire. So by 8 a.m., i.e., you will be experiencing a lot of that really heavy rain. And uh, even as we head into late morning, still seeing some of that moderate to heavy rainfall continuing through our region. So we'll talk about what to expect as we head into this afternoon and of course the weekend in just a few minutes. For now, a look at the roads uh, with Kalina. How are things looking out there? Olga, good morning. It has been so, so busy. Um, you might be driving or as you head out the door, you might have seen those signs that say stay off the roadway if you can. Please do that. We're just continuing to see all of these problem spots popping up this morning. We still have all lanes blocked off on the 10 eastbound. This is right at Kellogg. Um, this is all because of a traffic accident that we had here. They've issued a SIG alert, so there's no duration on it, when it'll actually be lifted. So it is causing a delay there as you approach the 57. You can take the 57, though. Traffic is being diverted in that direction. Now, the 5 freeway northbound right at Paramount. This is our camera where you can see traffic uh, starting to build here. We have a crash adding to this delay. And of course, I'll continue to track all the issues that we have out there this morning. And Ladies? there are so many of them. Kalina, thank mm -hmm. you. California now under a state of emergency as this latest storm sweeps the state. And we're already seeing some saturated roads in the San Fernando Valley. We have KCAL's Tina Patel live in Burbank, where some of these streets are now blocked off. Tina. Yeah, and we're actually in Van Nuys on Burbank Boulevard. And if I uh, kind of show behind me, the street now is closed. There are officers uh, up and down Burbank trying to keep people out of this area because of the flooding. Let me show you some video from uh, just maybe an hour ago that shows you what we were seeing when the road was still open. The problem is, is because it is so dark, cars were going through and not realizing that there were several inches of water on the roadway. Now, we didn't see anybody get stuck through those floods, but because there has been severe flooding in the supply, Pulvita Basin in the past. Uh, the CHP, the, the LAPD, they didn't want to take any chances. So Bal uh, Burbank Boulevard is now closed from Balboa Boulevard to the 405. This is not going to be open for the morning commute. Take a look at this video because earlier on the 101 freeway, we also saw some flooding and that had to lead to some lane closures. This was on the Van Nuys exit, the right two lanes. The water was just pulling up. Caltrans crews got there really quickly. They started working on the storm drain, getting that water to drain, and they were able to open those lanes of traffic. But both on surface streets and on the freeways, we're seeing